Hi! All right, welcome back to my channel. This is Faded La Vintage. I'm Colleen. Today we are at the Thrifty Shopper in Cicero, New York, and it's the end of the day. It's like 6 30, so we'll see what's inside. Looking for vintage to buy and sell on eBay. Starting off in the red section, I saw what looked like a berry colander, but it just turned out to be a modern florist piece. FTD gets me every time. Um, but then I took a peek at this vase. It had a really pretty um, glaze to it, but that's also modern. That poinsettia plate was also cute, but not really quite what I was looking for. Uh, over here in the pink section, I kind of taking a closer peek, notice this little Noritake bowl. Uh, Noritake China is actually a really good brand. Um, it's made in Japan and it's still made today. And digging around a bit, I found this piece, which is a chip and dip bowl that's marked Nippon, but it is missing the lid, unfortunately. And then Rapid Fire found this little demi toss and saucer that's marked Limoges, which I believe is an antique. So I snagged that up. And I also saw this Israel vase, uh, which is hand painted and really good piece. I did notice this platter on the bottom. And as I suspected, it is Italian, but it's huge and it has chips on it. So I did end up leaving that piece behind. Over here, I found this um, butterfly gold pattern Corel piece, which is a Pyrex compatible. And this set was absolutely amazing, but it was enormous. Uh, it's so late 80s and early 90s. And it's just fantastic, but I just, I wasn't prepared to deal with it. <laughs> it. These little saucers are great. I believe they're Hazel Atlas in the modern tone. And I searched for the cups for quite some time over in the coffee cup section, hoping I would come across them because I just loved those colors. But without the cups, the saucers weren't really worth picking up. Over here in the figurine section, I found this little bear, which is a shaker, unfortunately missing his little barrel of honey. I always take a peek at the music boxes too, especially when they're figurines. Um, you never know when you find a good name or one that's nice. And there's another, that's a huge vase. Uh, and there's another little girl I took a quick peek at, but both of these said made in China and there wasn't really anything super special about them, at least and that I could see. Uh, took a quick peek at that, saw there was a major damage on that little trinket box, so I left that behind as well. That ginger jar was missing its lid. I saw this box and I kind of regret that I did leave it behind. It's this pretty little glass trinket or jewelry box with a flapper on the front um, holding a child, a baby. Very sweet, very pretty. Um, I saw the modern uh, stickers to it and just kind of moved on, but those can run about $20. I also regret leaving behind those a little coaster set too. Because uh, those actually sell relatively well as well, too. And let's see, kind of moving on. I saw another trinket box, took a peek. That, I didn't see anything really spectacular about it. But moving on into more figurines. I saw this cute little planter, uh, but I eh, just wasn't feeling it that day. And that figurine i had higher hopes for it because it was very pretty but it was unmarked and had a bit of damage to it so i also left that behind santa had to take a peek at him because you know i love christmas but didn't see much that is a ginormous vase i suspected that it might have been a polish handkerchief vase but due to the size of it and the base it just it was also kind of saying maybe an Asian import as well, so I left it behind, especially due to the size. These were cool vases too, 
but they did still have their stickers. And look, it says Big Lots for $15 a piece originally. All right, we're losing light out here. So I spent $17. Um, I'm really happy with what I picked up. I a lot. I picked up a lot that first aisle. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I know that Corningware Bowl will cover the cost of everything. So I'm really happy about that. Um, I also got that little Israel vase. Um, I'll have to do some looking up on the Noritake piece and Limoges Demitasse cup and saucer. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Hi. All right. So it's a couple days later. I am at Goodwill and it's a Saturday. At least it's not a Sunday again. <laughs> All right. And I'm wearing my contacts today. No glasses because I have an eye appointment and they want me to wear my contacts. So uh, we are going to go into Goodwill and we are going to see what we can find. See you there. All right, so starting off, I saw these clear glass fish plates and in two different sizes. These, I believe, are, I'm going to say it wrong, but Arcarock, uh, which is a French brand. Um, but the comps just weren't there, so I did end up moving on. Um, didn't really see a whole lot in the plate section. Uh, those were kind of pretty. They had an iridescence to them, but... Uh, believe they were just little votive lights so then on this shelf um, let's see, I saw these pumpkins up top and I just love the scale of them but I believe they were hobbyist pieces once I looked a little closer at them I always look in the Christmas section saw this little trinket box but it wasn't very good quality and also it had a little bit of damage to it and ears so I left them behind. And I did in the Halloween section see these buckets. They are marked Made in USA, but they're made for Target. So I don't think they're particularly vintage. This is a gorgeous piece. It's a Czechoslovakian wall pocket. Uh, when you do see these, they're great to pick up, but that one had a huge damage on it. Um, then a little Otagiri music box. If this worked, I would have picked it up in a heartbeat because Otagiri is a great brand uh, to keep an eye out for. I saw that lamp, it's super cute. I also saw these plastic pieces, which are also wall pockets. Uh, the last time I looked these up was a couple of years ago. So I put them in my cart to look up comps. Um, unfortunately, the comps weren't as good as the last time that I saw which would have been like, I believe it was $25 for the set for, the, for when I remembered it, but it actually, the price had dropped quite a bit, so I ended up leaving them behind. And I did go back so I could show you there was quite some damage on that lamp. Oh, look, that bottle is still here. <laughs> and there's me leaving behind the plastic set. Also another cute planter, also broken and repaired. So I did leave it behind. And then I saw this, which is a fantastic little centerpiece. Um, I love the little deer on it, but it was $8. And it looked to be missing something. Like there was a gap <laughs> in the greenery and I thought it was pretty noticeable. So I did end up leaving it behind, even though I went back and forth on it quite a bit. And looking around a little bit more and I saw this little acrylic or lucite egg. I've never seen it in an egg shape. I've always seen them in either a sphere or a half circle for paperweights, but this did have like something. Something is stuck to the outside of this. I don't know what it is. If it's some sort of glue or I don't, I don't know. Uh, so I figured I would give it a shot, see if I could clean it up and go from there. Spoiler, I couldn't clean it up. <laughs> I did pick up this tin, um, I, looking at it, I didn't end up buying it because the, I did look up comps on it. And even though this would sell for about 10 to $15, there is a lot of them listed. I got really excited when I saw this until I saw the price tag. Then I ran away quickly. <laughs> and a fresh cart came out, so I grabbed this little Pyrex bowl out of it. 
All right, so I'm all done in Goodwill. I spent six dollars. Um, I I was looking, I wasn't finding, and everything I found was broken <laughs> or really expensive. Hi. All right, so that was kind of a short thrifting video. Um, and I kind of cut it off kind of abruptly there. Um, but uh, you did see what I got from Goodwill and from Thrifty Shopper. Uh, but what I thought I would do for you today is also show you a few other things that I'm going to be listing over the next week or so. Um, this is some stuff that I've had either in my inventory or was part of a collection that I'm kind of just grown out of a little bit. Uh, but still things that I love, but it's time to let them go. So let me show you what I have. Okay, so here we are in my dining room. Um excuse the, the water noises like I said I in previous video that I have my fish tank in my dining room so it can get a little loud um I picked up on the recorded audio so sorry about that um so Easter's coming up so I've already kind of started putting that together but as you can see it's snowed over the past couple days <laughs> which is fun actually a lot of it's melted off so it's a lot less than it was but uh, let me show you what I have here. Um, so uh, this is already listed. It was, I brought it up because a customer had a question about it. Um, but this vase, I have to do a little bit more research on it, but it's actually really beautifully made. It's quite heavy for the size. Uh, it's a pretty thick glass and it has a very smooth bottom. Uh, there is some damage to it. There's a chip there in the bottom. And I want to say there's a little chip on one of these ridges. I just can't seem to find it at the moment. I, It makes me think Murano, but it could be very easily something else. So I'll have to do a little research. But it is beautiful where it, like you can see in the light that it actually fades from a pink purple into a clear green. So it's really pretty. It's like kind of watermelon, I would describe it as. Uh, then I do have a pair of candlesticks. Uh, these I picked up, actually this I picked up, it was an extra at an auction a couple of years ago. Um, but these I picked up, I had a slight um, obsession <laughs> with uh, Fenton uh, Colonial Blue. These are the rose pattern candlesticks. Uh, they are unmarked, which puts them, the pre-logo um, that Fenton uh, didn't start putting a logo on things until 1971. And even then they didn't put the logo on everything. So these are from sometime in the 1970s or earlier. I'll have to see when they first started making this particular pattern in this particular color, but that can, I'll see what I can find. But they are a beautiful color. I absolutely love this color, but it's just, not something that I need this much of. And these are the first pieces that I decided to let go. I also have this great little Nortaki bowl. This is an older piece, but it's definitely, um, it's kind of, that mark places it kind of mid-century. It is a great scene and it's very well painted because it is Nortaki, so the quality is there. But as you can see, there is some wear from washing and dusting, as well as there's supposed to be a gold band around the outside of this bowl, but that is also pretty worn as well. Um, but it's still a beautiful bowl. And then I have these right here. These are also Noritake. And this particular pattern, oh, what's it called? Um, the name of it escapes me right now, but it's the name of this particular flower. But the number is 19322. Uh, this is a muffin ear. 
and a cream pitcher. And it's part of a berry set. So you would put sugar in here and you have your cream and you would pour it over your berries and it'd be a really like sweet treat. Um, let me see, and I also have this little cutie. It is a, she is made in Japan. That particular mark, again, the name of the company kind of escapes me. Um, but I have, I will have her listed properly with the proper name, but she's um, mid-century and she is in very good shape. There is one little tiny chip at the end of her tiny little pinky right there, but otherwise all the rest of her fingers are intact. But she's a cutie and she even has like good detail on the back, which is <laughs> like, look at that but she's adorable and she's a kind of an odd color she's like a turquoise almost like she's a blue green but depending on the light it reads differently like sometimes in some light it's more blue some light it's more green so but she's a cutie and oh all the petals are on her flower and if you look closely enough you can see the thumb the fingerprints of the person who made her so that's pretty cool. This little, bas um, little basket here is Portuguese. And the 2010 on it, I'm not 100% sure if that's actually the date it was produced or if it's like a pattern number. But um, these are still being produced today, not necessarily in this shape or pattern, but little things like this are definitely still being made in Portugal. So I just thought it was very sweet. And I bought that at a thrift store um, last year. I also picked this up last year. This is a um, Gans piece. Um, it's a Susan Pally, and this one's called Portrait of Grandma. It is a plate, it does have little felt feet on it, and there's no chips or cracks on that. These, uh, the ladies, um, there's a particular line by the same artist in this company, and it's, it's just all different women in this very unique style. And they, they're very charming, and they're pretty collectible too. So what's left is, we have these two great little, um, stained glass uh sun wow <laughs> words stained glass sun catchers wow okay <laughs> These are a couple of adorable stained glass sun catchers um we have a lemon with green leaves and we have this cute little i believe it's a daisy maybe but both really cute. I picked these up at garage sales, I believe last year. It was either last summer or the summer before, I can't remember. This one, I picked this up at an auction. Um, I believe it was the same auction as that vase, but I'm not 100% sure. This is actually a uranium, uranium glass depression glass tidbit tray with hand-painted enamel flowers on it and some gold trim like you see the gold on the top of the handle it's a beautiful piece there is one small chip on it if you can see it on the edge there but otherwise it's in very good condition other than some wear on the paint and the gold which is understandable when this thing's probably between 80 and 100 years old <laughs> but this thing does glow quite intensely under black light too even in daylight, as low as the daylight is, um, at this you should be able to see the glow pretty intensely with the black light. And that's, that's a pretty good glow. <laughs> so I should have all of these listed within the next week or so, including everything that you've seen from my thrifting and shopping videos previously um 
like this what's in this box is that's from the flea market and that's the last little little critter little ladybug and then needs to get listed from when i went to the antique show on my previous video but i think that's all i have for you today if you like this kind of content like comment and subscribe and i'll see you then bye